When you think of applique, you probably think of floral quilt blocks and dainty throw pillows, but today we're going to freshen things up and explore some modern applications for this dynamic technique. And we have a very special guest, fitting expert Gabby Brown. Welcome to Stitch Lab. Hi, I'm Amanda Carestio. I'm Kate Zeinard. And I'm Meg Healy. We are the hosts of the Sew and Tell podcast, and we are very excited to start a new series for you called Stitch Lab. In each episode, we are going to cover essential techniques and present inspiring experiments. I need to put my safety glasses on for this experiment. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, good. <laughs> Wonderful! That was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Wow! Welcome to Stitch Lab. We are here today with Gabby Brown. Welcome, Gabby. Thank you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? So I am an apparel professional. I have years and years of background in the ready-to-wear manufacturing business. I specialize in fit and garment production. I'm kind of dipping my toes back into the world of home sewing over the past couple of years. So I'm learning all sorts of new techniques being here today with you ladies. Awesome. So fun. Today we're talking about applique. So let's start with, do you guys do any applique? You know, I haven't done as much in recent years, but I used to do a lot of little mini quilts and kind of more raw edge applique focus, little little home decor so things. Cute. Maybe turn them into a pillow every, every now and then, but raw edge is definitely my favorite because it's kind of the easiest. No. no? The easiest <laughs> is to do it by machine embroidery, which is how I do it. Oh yeah, like that is, it. you're right, okay. Because you, you, you program it into the machine, you let the machine do all the work. So with actual hand applique, I have very little experience, yeah. but I do it on the machine all the time. Yeah. So how about you, Gabby? Oh, never, I don't know. This is all <laughs> new for me. <laughs> I have made like little patches and stuff right. before, mm -hmm. um, but never anything uh, like large scale. So learning how to do this was a total curveball. I love hand sewing though. So mm -hmm. for me, this was kind of like, oh, okay, I can, I can get behind this. Yeah. yeah, it's a super cool technique. Yeah, for sure. So you've got some samples to I've show us. I've got a few us. samples and I did, I wanted to talk through the different kinds of applique there are out there because there are a ton of options when it comes to applique, many of which you can do by hand. Actually, we've got a good sample here and I did not make this. Let me just be the first to say that, but this is needle turned applique and this is done by hand. We're actually turning the shapes. It's, it's tone on tone, so it's a little hard to see, but you're um, turning the shape in and then hand stitching it down, it's which beautiful. I feel like that'd be a great project to take on the road if you were traveling. Mm -hmm. So I could see myself doing it in that scenario, but maybe only that scenario. Because right. <laughs> I'm more of a machine person. Yeah. And then when you when you get to the machine, actually there's a variety of techniques that you can do. Blanket stitch is one of them, raw edge applique, which we're gonna step out a little bit later, which is my favorite, satin stitch, and then also reverse applique. So there's really a lot of ways to kind of bring it into your sewing practice and make it modern. Awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. So Amanda, you mentioned the uh, satin stitch, which we're gonna demo in a little bit, but the other thing you can do when you have a piece of applique and you want to cover up the edge is you can pull out your machine and look at all those cool decorative stitches that come with it, uh, especially if you have one that's got like you know, 108 stitches mm -hmm. and you never know what to do with them. You can pull out an applique and you can use those stitches instead of the satin stitch and it gives it a whole different look and it's pretty neat and it's a great way to use up those stitches. I love any opportunity to use those decorative stitches. I hear you. <laughs> um, the other thing that you can use when you are doing applique that you, you should use because it makes life so much easier is fusible web. Fusible Have web. you guys worked with this before? No. Well, y you'll see my samples, so yes. Okay. <laughs> Yes. This stuff is awesome for doing a variety of applique techniques, but essentially it's paper-backed fusible web. You've got paper on one side and kind of an iron-on fusible oh. on the other side, so you trace your shape, 
fuse it to the wrong side of the fabric, cut it out and peel off the paper. And it's basically an iron on at that point. Oh. And then you've got a lot of different options about how you secure it to the base fabric. But it is so much fun to work with. Now, if you're foolish like me, you don't look too hard at your packaging and you get the kind that's not paper backed. Oh. And then you have to cut out a piece that's the exact same shape as the thing and get it all measured out and, and get everything sandwiched. And it's definitely way easier to use the paper back kind, so do that. Mm -hmm. I recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to do a little bit of our experimenting in the lab. Amanda is going to show us how to do the raw edge. That's right. Uh, Gabby's going to try out some reverse applique. I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm going to uh, attempt to do some straight satin stitching, and we're going to see how that goes. So stick with us. All right, let's get our experiment started. Kate is up first with a little bit of satin stitching. All right, this is not my area of expertise, but I have a little pillow front here that I've created. I used some nice fusible web to keep everything in place so I don't need to worry about pinning it or anything. And I think I'm actually going to start here because I want to have the ones that are behind go first so the stitching is basically like the appearance of the thing. So awesome. Right. I love the mountains by the way. Mm. Oh thank you. I've also I've set up the multi-purpose foot here on the machine, which is especially good for satin stitching. It's got kind of a channel in the middle to kind of help keep everything straight. And then we sew. So of course the thing about satin stitching is because it's kind of dense, it doesn't feed through very quickly. This machine is so quiet. Mm -hmm. I know, it's so nice. All right, so as I'm approaching the corner, I'm gonna kind of pay attention. The needle's set so it sticks down. I'm gonna start, start it in the middle and then I'm gonna pivot it just a little bit and do two stitches and then pivot it a little bit more. A couple stitches. Oops, one more than I wanted. Pivot a little bit more. So I'm kind of trying to work my way around this corner so it's pretty instead of a total disaster. And I've kind of gotten off of my edge a little bit, but I think if I just wiggle it a little bit, so we'll finish up sewing this piece and then we'll look at how that corner actually turned out. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah. it's not perfect, but it's not terrible either. Definitely a little wonky right there. But I think I'll get better each time I do it. Absolutely. Well, and it's nice and secure there, so you won't have to worry about that point peeling back. Oh, definitely point's yeah. not gonna peel back. Yeah. You can also just, uh, you know, basically stop right here and then pick it up going this way, mm -hmm. and that also makes a fairly good point. I might try that on some of the others. I love how it makes it pop. Mm -hmm. And did you have to do any start stop back stitch at the front or the at the end when you stop? You know, or I you just tail I off? didn't. I think this this end will get secured in the seam mm -hmm. and then this one I'll end up stitching over when I do this mountain. So mm -hmm. no, I don't think I yeah, actually will ever need to. It looks so good. Mm -hmm. Oh thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on to our next one. Is that you, Amanda? That's me. I'm gonna do some raw edge applique for you. All right. Okay, well, I feel like I have the easy job here because raw edge applique really is easy. It's essentially the same setup as for satin stitch. I've got some shapes that I traced onto fusible web. I've fused them in place on this store-bought bag. I want you guys to know that I worked really hard and undid <laughs> all the stitching over here and it was surged and everything, but I oh. unpicked it. And so I've got these fused in place. One quick note when you're using fusible webbing, you wanna make sure that you trace your design in reverse. Otherwise, when you transfer it um, over to your base fabric, it'll be backwards, which isn't a problem with hearts. Right, but if you like have some nice big bubble words. <laughs> Absolutely, they're gonna be backwards. It's not gonna be fun. And I also have just the standard foot and I've moved my needle over a little bit to the right. I'm gonna try to stitch fairly close to the edge here, about a quarter of an inch. You could probably use an edge stitch foot for this if you are really feeling finicky about how close you are to the edge, but I'm not. I'm just going to get as close as I can and just stitch around this shape. And you said this is the small stitch setting. What's the length that you're using? I'm just using a 2.5. Okay. It's, it's really not, you could go smaller if you've got a really intricate shape. Mm -hmm. 
But I kind of just, I, I kind of go straight and then pivot with the needle down and just work my way really slowly around the curve. So you don't go with the uh, top stitch philosophy if you use a longer stitch length? No, I think it's actually easier, um, especially on these little tight curves. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing a, um, a bigger shape, I think that you could. Like if I were doing my mountains, I could probably do a pretty totally. long one. And test it out and see what works best for you. You have so many options with this technique. You could do a double layer of straight stitching. You could practice with one of the decorative stitches. Oh, yeah. It's really quick and easy to do. And this is a really great technique for home decor, for yeah. bags, mm -hmm. for things that you're not gonna wash as often because these edges will eventually start to ravel. I mm -hmm. actually kind of like that look. It gives it a little bit of a dimension to it. Yeah, and it gets I, a little boho. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And that's perfect for these hearts. And you know this is gonna be for my daughter. Oh, I'm not much of a heart person. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna stitch this other one in place and then restitch this side edge here. And this perfect last minute gift for a kid's birthday or for, for anyone really. And you basically get to create your own iron on. And I've done this quite a bit. So you can go as basic as a heart or you can get pretty involved with your shapes and do some interior openings. I used to do this a bunch and I used to have so much fun and working on this has kind of reminded me how much fun this is. But kind of moving around the curves, combining a little bit of hand stitching with your machine stitching and you can get a, get a really unique kind of layered look. These are beautiful. Thanks. You did yeah. such a good job Thanks. getting so close to the edge here. I know that I would probably be a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> it does take a little practice with those curves. Mm -hmm. so. Practice makes perfect. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why we're here. All right, next up we're gonna talk reverse applique. Is that right? Reverse applique, right. babies. <laughs> Let's, Let's do it. Let's do it. it. Well, I did mention disaster earlier, and that's kind of how I felt approaching this reverse situation. I've never done this before, so it was all a big experiment. The cool thing that I really, really like about reverse applique is, so you're not top setting, you're under setting the fabric, um, and then stitching around it in whatever way, mm -hmm. and then cutting it out on the top, so it creates this really cool, like textural shadow box effect almost. Mm -hmm. Very um, dimensional. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. So. I appreciate the idea of it. I'm clearly not very good at it yet. So here's my poor little heart. This one, I just did a machine stitch all the way around, not nearly as nice as yours, and then cut out the top layer of muslin so you can see the gray fabric underneath. I experimented with doing some hand stitching around mm -hmm. to kind of hold the fabric down. So we have a little bit of French knots. We have some very poor embroidery. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Oh, come on. I wanted to try some more just kind of geo shapes mm -hmm. here. I feel like these could look really powerful if they were, you know, more in a row mm -hmm. to kind of like bring mm -hmm. some bang for your buck. But this actually was my favorite of all of the techniques that I tried. So here I turned under the edge here and then attached it with a hand stitch around so it gave it even more oomph mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. fold of the fabric. So you can right. see that little shadow here. It really looks 3D. Yeah. Um, so that said, I thought I can show you what I'm going to be working on. I didn't know about your cool fusible, what is it, fusible web? Fusible web, Well, yeah. now I know because I just use regular interfacing, so. <laughs> that worked too. Womp, was... womp. So here's what I was thinking. I wanted to try to do like a little quilt block. Mm -hmm. So I happen to be a fan of DTM muslin, so hopefully you guys can see this. So what I did was I fused the top layer, but not the bottom layer. So it's just a square. And then I added a piece of lace in the middle, and I'm just going to pin down my muslin on top of this, so we're getting that same kind of effect mm -hmm. can see that. of the top set here. Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah, I think it's going to be really cute. And then, because I'm hand sewing, really, this, is, this might be the easiest one of them all, I'm going to take <laughs> some contrast thread, and I'm just going to kind of do some straight stitching throughout to attach everything and hold it down. And then once that's done, I'll kind of decide how big I want this block piece to be. And maybe it goes into, you know, like a crazy quilt or something like that, yeah. where it can be kind of like a little bit wacky. You can kind of just play around with this. This yeah. is the nice thing about it is that you can kind of finagle it and just push the fabric where you want it to be. It doesn't have to be you don't have to be precious with it, mm -hmm. I guess you should say. It's very organic. Yeah. I really like the feel of it in my hands. Mm -hmm. It makes me yeah, it's feel nice. closer to yeah. the making mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. A little bit more tactile. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 
there we go. So cool. Imagine this a little bit neater and as if a professional had done it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so fun. I love all the layers and the lace really adds something yeah. special mm -hmm. too. Yeah, absolutely. And I always feel like once you are starting off on a project, once you're a beginner, it's nice to give yourself a little grace and say, okay, I might have some disasters, but we're learning. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. You gotta you gotta try it to find out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think we've done some good experiments here, don't you ladies? Absolutely. absolutely. Yes, thank you so much for joining us, Gabby. We really enjoyed having you. Thanks for having thank me. This you. is so great. Yeah. This is really great. All right, that was a lot of fun, and we learned a lot, don't you think? Yeah, we covered tips for satin stitch applique, reverse applique, and some raw edge applique. That's a lot. Yeah, and we learned about fusible web. Mm -hmm. I'm really inspired. I think I mentioned that my little heart bag was gonna be for my daughter. Mm -hmm. But I think next I'm gonna make something for myself. And you knew it was gonna be skate themed. Oh, so I've got a little so skate applique ready to go. I think it's gonna go on a wheel bag. Oh, that will be so cute. Yeah, how about you? What are you gonna do next? Oh, uh, well, next I'm gonna finish my pillow, but I'm really looking forward to it. I, I like the design that yeah. I made. I think it's gonna look really cool and I am gonna get better at my corners. Yeah, <laughs> there you go, there you go. Well, so much fun. So much fun. Join us next time on Stitch Lab.